Today you're going to see a video that shows a classroom using the jigsaw strategy. Now this strategy is where you create small groups in two different ways. First, you will have a group of experts. You can do this with different levels or by interest. This one shows you by reading level. So we have above, on, and below level, and each of them are doing a different piece to bring to the table. Let's take a so look. So today we're gonna to talk about comparing fiction and fact. We're gonna talk about historical facts and then how authors interpret those facts or use those facts in their text or media, okay? So, you're going to be able to compare and contrast the fictional portrayal of time, place, or character and a historical event at the same time period. You're going to be able to analyze two or more authors writing about the same topic and how that shapes their... Reviewing the standards and goals for learning before the lesson, establish a focus for students. In addition, you want to establish expectations for small groups. These expectations need to be reviewed repeatedly and clarified to help students remember. So, I have some expectations when we do small groups, okay? Now, I saw you guys yesterday. You're an awesome class. You're seriously well behaved, but you guys are also really, really quiet, and you're going to have to talk to each other today, okay? I, don't, I hope that's not a problem. It's not. Okay. It's not? Yes. All right. First of all, when we move from one space to another, we need to move quietly, okay? Because we want to get quit quietly because we don't have a lot of time, okay? We need to make sure that we're using our time as wisely as possible because I've got this set down from, from open to end of this class period, okay? We're going to keep the volume at a level two. Now, let me tell you what that means. What I've been talking at right now is what I consider level six. If I was talking a little louder, I'd be talking a lot at level eight. Now, would that distract somebody in here if they were listening to that volume over here and you're trying to concentrate? Sure would. It really would. So we're going to do level two. Let me, let me demonstrate for you guys. Can you hear me? They, they heard me. Can you hear what I said? No. That's, that's level two. Okay, so if you're doing level two, everybody in your group can hear but nobody else is distracted, so let's keep it a level two. All right, all movement and noise stops when the teacher signals. So I'm going to make a simple signal today. We're just going to go, I mean, stop what you're doing, and you're going to listen, okay? That means that I'm going to try and transition to another piece. All right, all members participate and contribute to their groups. Don't be thinking somebody else is going to do all the work. I'm going to be walking around. I want to see everybody contributing, all right? You can't let everybody else do the work for you. You have to become an expert. Members respect each other's, um, I put this, each person's valuable contribution to the group. Let's not diss somebody because maybe they interpreted something differently than you. Talk it through respectfully, okay? And then students will take ownership of their learning. You're owning your work. I'm not in charge of this work. You are, okay? So it's only going to be as good as you make it, all right? Sound fair? We good? All so right. here's what the small group rotation is going to look like today. We're going to be in our expert groups. That's what you're in now. You're going to be an expert in what you're doing, okay? Your groups are going to meet, and you're going to be on a specific piece, and you have to be responsible to know that information because you're going to be the only one in your next group, your home group, who knows that information. So if you don't have it, you can't bring it to the table, then the rest of your home group won't get it either. So you have to be responsible for the work here, okay? So your home group is we're gonna meet back with some others from the other expert groups, and you're going to be sharing out that information, okay? As this lesson combines standards and language arts and social studies, students will be learning about medieval times, identifying historical facts as compared to literature and media portrayal. The above level group seen here is working on excerpts from the Once and Future King. Each group received a packet of handouts. One page is questions for the expert group based on their material. The at level group received the historical facts articles to identify true facts about medieval times. And the below level group watched excerpts from the Sword and the Stone, pulling ideas and facts they saw in the clip and based on the guidance of questions given in their handouts. 
A benefit of using small group strategies is the time it allows you to work with smaller groups to ensure students understand. The second piece of the jigsaw puzzle is to bring those expert groups into new groups where they are with the different experts from each area and get to share out their expertise. Within these groups, they are able to now do a different activity where they are combining that information. For this particular strategy and for this particular lesson, they are actually going to be comparing and contrasting their new expertise. When students arrived at their home groups, they shared out their information and the group completed a comparison chart that was also included in their packet. In addition, they answered an analyzing question about their newfound knowledge. Pulling the groups back together, the whole class discussed the question given to the home group. Some examples not aligned to historical facts. Why would you do that? Why would you have examples, why would you have things in your book that don't align with history? So maybe you don't know that something actually happened, so you kind of made up your own, okay? What else? We talked about something over here. What's an example we talked about over here? It has to fit the story. Yeah, it has to fit the story. We were talking about the video and even talking about <clears throat> the book. If they really had those church schools, would they have needed a tutor? Well, like this is just one example of how you can use the jigsaw strategy. There are different ways that you could have done this lesson. For instance, I did it based on the reading level, but you could have done it by interest. You could have made it where students who were more interested in visual and auditory learning to watch the video, whereas those who really love that in-depth reading could have been reading The Once and Future King. So those are different ways that you could have changed up the actual expert, expert groups in order to make them unique. While this jigsaw lesson gave the students a chance to gain that information and gather that content, we could extend this lesson. We could create a project-based choice for students to be able to expand and explain their own understanding and knowledge. If we do that, we are now creating choice in the product category of differentiation which even makes it better that we're doing more differentiation beyond the process with the jigsaw strategy.